Hi there guys and welcome to today's live stream. We're gonna be giving you guys a roadmap to recovering to your exercises, your work, etc. after having a back injury. So hopefully you guys are gonna get tons of value in today's live stream. We'll go through a few evaluation points and then at the end of the video, we're gonna go through a, a sort of a strategy, if you will. I'll go through some stuff on the board behind me and you'll have sort of a really clear way forwards for reintroducing exercises or activities that you've done in the past uh, back into your daily habits after having back pain. Once again, if you're new to the channel then please do consider subscribing hit the notification bell we go live every single weekday and we always do q a at the end of the live stream and today is no different we've got lara the other side of the camera she will be taking down your questions so put those in the comments below as soon as you hear something or, or we raise a point or topic that is of interest ask questions and then we'll go through those at the end of the live stream with that being said let's get into today's live stream So uh, a roadmap to reintroduce your exercises after back pain injury. Uh, we've got sort of quite a, a simple structure for today's live stream. Hopefully it's gonna be really, really helpful. If you wanna take notes, then go ahead, please do, because this is really, if you're, if you're part of our Back in Shape membership area, then this is starting to be a question that some people ask maybe a bit prematurely in phase two and others will we'll get to in phase three. And we just wanna make sure that you guys understand how to reintroduce some of these activities. You have a, a sort of a structure in place so that you can effectively return to this. Now this could be um, getting back to work, if you've had periods of time off, maybe coincidentally with lockdown or just you know, you're watching this in the future, you can, you've can you got a period of time off because of your back pain, how can we get back into work? Or it might be an activity that you enjoy doing. This question uh, or this topic was actually prompted by one of the uh, members uh, in our Back in Shape. Uh, so they'll, they'll, you'll, you'll recognize this uh, topic once we get into it. So um, it can be a number of different things, whether it's a sporting activity, whether it's getting back into work, whether it's just returning to the gym. We wanna make sure you guys have a good understanding of how we can deal with this effectively. So we'll start off with sort of when is the time, when is the right time to get back into these activities or consider getting back into these activities. Uh, three questions that you can ask, go through that on the whiteboard behind, and then that strategy for returning. And as I was doing the prep this morning for the live stream, I came up with um, a, an acronym, TREAT. So I'll go through that. Uh, it might already exist, but it popped, uh, you know, it came up off the top of my head when I was doing today's uh, prep. So hopefully it'll be, it'll help you have a little structure to reintroduce exercises uh, after back pain. So if we jump onto the board first and foremost, we've got three real questions we want to be asking ourselves um, as we go, as as we look to return in back into sort of exercise. So what was injured first and foremost? Now I'm gonna quickly sort of filter out some of you guys that are watching this because if you've injured it yesterday, you're actually feeling good again today, uh, then this video isn't really for you. You're probably not even on YouTube. But for most of you guys, you've got a injury that's maybe been there for a longer period of time. It's built up, started out as muscle stiffness maybe, or a bit of discomfort in the back, and then it's progressed on. Maybe it's sciatica, maybe it's a bulging disc, maybe it's a spondylolisthesis or something else. Um, if it's been there for a little bit longer, we want to understand what is it that's actually injured in our back. And then how did you find the rehab? And the real important question here is when you started doing it, say for example, it's our phase one, we've got that core engagement exercise. A core engagement exercise is not really building anything, but it's teaching you mentally to re-engage those muscles, re-engage that core. Um, and some people really struggle with that. Some people it takes them a week or two weeks or more to actually learn to re-engage that core effectively because it's something we haven't done for years. So if we've taken a little bit longer to get into these activities, we need to go for a little bit longer before we can start adding in more arduous activities. Say it was going back to, I don't know, uh, going down to the local dance club or gymnastics hall or going for a run. If we've been struggling to engage our core effectively or the foundational exercise, then we really need to bear that in mind and that's gonna sort of hold us back a little bit in terms of our, so the speed at which we return to those activities because we're starting from a lower base level. Uh, some of you guys will then find some of the phase two exercises that we talk about and, and if you wanna learn more about the Back and Shape program, you can click the link in the description or there'll be a card somewhere around here that you can click for more information. But if you've moved into the phase two exercise and you're doing say some of the dead bugs or marching bridges and we can only do two or three of those reps to begin with, maybe they don't give you pain, maybe they do, but you're struggling to do them effectively, then that again is an indicator that although we can go from one week where we're doing them two or three of them, and maybe in a week or two's time, we're able to do 
three sets of 10, for example, and you're doing your core rehab well, there's still a lot longer that we need to go in order to be able to effectively do things like running and those more arduous tasks. So we just want to bear in mind where are we in relation to where we should be in order to partake in those more arduous uh, exercises or daily activities. So that's a very, very important one. If you're someone who's cracked straight on through with what we call phase two and you're doing the phase three workouts and you're doing them really well, then you, and, and that activity you want to return to is something a little bit more simplistic, then you can really consider, maybe I can jump back into this activity a little bit faster but we need to then consider what was injured. And then the final, final one is looking at what activity we're actually trying to get into. So is it just you know, uh, going for a walk with your other half around the block or something like that? Or you know, going down to the beach and having a walk along the beach? Well, that's much, much less intensive than going trampolining or getting back into triple jump. So we need to look at those sort of three evaluation points. What's injured? How have I been on the rehab front? How, how many weaknesses did I have before that I maybe wasn't aware of? And then what activity are we looking to get into? And if, you, if you're watching this right now and you can answer some of those questions, post those in the comments below. What activity would you like to be doing? Um, and, and, and that's a really important evaluation point because it sets that goal out. It allows you to understand where are, you, where are we aiming for? So once we've sort of established that, we want to look at what are we actually going to do in order to get back into that activity? How can we have that roadmap, uh, if you will? So the first thing is, recognizing and many of you will know this but a lot of you guys won't as well back pain relapses are often delayed it's not like you've just cut yourself and you can see oh it's bleeding now a lot of times when we injure our back or we re-aggravate back at the back or have a relapse it's something that we've done a day or so prior and i was speaking to one of the guys uh, the other day who'd had a little bit of relapse uh, re-aggravation of things and it wasn't until maybe two days later that we'd identified that it was a longer cycle that may well have not been not been uh, such a good idea it was about 50 50 kilometers i think it was um, so those sorts of things don't necessarily give you grief at the time you do them. And that's the one big thing with back pain that often leaves a lot of patients and a lot of you guys watching this in a state of somewhat confusion because you just don't know what on earth you've done. You've woken up this morning and all of a sudden, you, you, you know, you're, it's going down your leg or whatever the case may be. This is a really, really important thing to at least understand because then at least if we have a principle, a structure to adhere to, we can be a little bit more sure of what we're doing. So then the next one, a big mistake. A lot of people then get back into these things, reintroducing things like yoga as, as a, something that you enjoy or other activities. Sometimes they then replace that with the rehab. So some of these exercises or activities may well be appropriate to add in in phase two or phase three, depending on how we've answered those first three questions. But not at the expense of dropping out the rehabilitation work because that is really, really important. So don't stop your rehab. You've got those that phase one work that you can do. So if you did decide you wanted to go out on the bicycle, maybe you've got a nice upright bike and you just want to go for a little 20 minute cycle around the block, it's a nice weather. I'm thinking of one person in particular, then that would be okay. That light's gone out. <laughs> that would be okay. Let's come back on. Um, that would be okay to, to go around the block. Um, but you've got to have that phase one routine in your mind that you're going to go back onto that when you get back in. You're going to get on the towel, you're going to do a little bit of that low body stretching, and we're going to use the ice afterwards. So retaining the routines that you have in the phase one, two, and three, as, and not deviating away from them when we start to reintroduce these other activities. They're not a replacement, we are reintroducing them, especially in the earlier stages of rehab. The next thing we want to know, which kind of ties in to this first point, what was injured, is the healing process can be slow. The rehabilitation process um, is fine and we're working on muscles there, but the actual healing process can be a little bit slow. And this healing process is basically, we, we all see it in our skin, we see it occurring, but in some of these discs and some of the articular surfaces in our spine, this takes place a lot slower. So you see that you develop a scab, so there's a lot of disorganized tissue, platelets, collagen, etc., dumped in this area, and then slowly it gets remodeled and remodeled and remodeled along force lines, and then you've got nice clean skin again, and it, it, it's lovely. 
Well, that process takes a long period of time in, in, inside us, in certain structures like the discs, like the cartil uh, cartilage surfaces, etc. They remodel very, very slowly and restore their tensile strength, their ability to load bear very, very slowly. So we want to be cautious in this process of returning to activity. And something we often tell patients is the pain levels often go down. The level of disability often goes down a little bit faster than the healing process takes place. So that is a really important thing to have in the back of your mind which is why the last point is going to be so important and and this acronym treat t-r-e-a-t -E is something that again i just pop you know came up with off the top of my head but it'll help you guys really start to appreciate this so you've gone through this evaluation process what was it that was injured how did we find the rehab and what activity are we looking to do then you test the minor version of that activity give it a go one afternoon maybe it's on a day that you're not very busy with work don't go and say, oh, I've got a back-to-back -back day at work, and then I've got X, Y, and Z, and I'm gonna do that as a test day. Maybe it's a Sunday, maybe it's an easy day, uh, or maybe it's a weekday where you don't have much on and you're, you're flexible, and you say, do you know what, today's the day I'm gonna try maybe that particular exercise or that particular activity or whatever it may be, and you test it. Then you rest. You go through your normal phase one exercises, maybe it is. Um, you do your normal routine. Maybe we're doing some icing, we're using the towel for the lower back. We're doing our, our stretching work and we rest and we go to sleep and, and that's not, not in the middle of the day. But you go to sleep at the end of the day and then the next day we're going to evaluate. We're going to evaluate that next day, not the same day, the next day. we we'll say, how was I during the activity? How was I after the activity? And how am I feeling today in the context of the normal fluctuations of this active, of, of, of how I've been maybe the last week or two? And depending on that evaluation point, I'm feeling better, I'm feeling fine, I'm feeling indifferent. Then we can adjust, we can say, right, we, there's no need to adjust in this case, and we can carry on, we can test again in a few days time, not immediately the next day. Or it might be, you might think, oh, I'm a little bit sore, maybe my muscles are a little bit sore, because you may have been on a, a particularly long walk or you've done your run for the first time. Maybe you're getting back into running. I know some of you guys do want to get back into running in the Back in Shape membership site. So maybe you've just gone for a 10 minute jog. There's extra guidance on that and we can talk about that another time. But maybe you've just gone back into a, in, into a jog and you're evaluating the next day and you're going, oh, my legs are a little bit sore. Okay, why is that? Well, it's sore. And you can always ask us inside the, the Back in Shape membership site on the Facebook group. That's a great tool for, ask, uh, for, you know, for helping you guys get back into these sorts of activities. So do comment in there. That's really, really important. But you evaluate that and you say, okay, my legs are a little bit sore. We're going to adjust. Next run, I'm going to do a little bit less. Or I'm going to adjust them and do an extra phase one routine today just to make sure I stretch those out, make sure they're doing well over the next day or so. And then I'll retest or test again in two or three days. So maybe you did that on a Sunday, you're going to have another run, maybe the back end of the week on Friday or Saturday. And that's the way we can then proceed forwards. We test, we rest, allow our body to recover for the rest of that day, sleep, sleep on it, see how you feel the next day because that gives you that opportunity to absorb all the reactions that may take may take place those delayed reactions evaluate adjust if necessary and then test again next time so hopefully that's given you guys a little bit of a framework to start to reintroduce some of those activities whether it's uh, dancing class whether it's triple jump whether it's going for a run whether it's going for a ride on your bicycle um, you know it's going to give you guys a little bit of a framework for looking to reintroduce those particular exercises to your routine one last recap and then we'll go into Q&A for you guys. So if you've got any questions right now, please do post this in the comments so we can help you guys a little bit more. Um, what was injured? Have a look at what you've actually injured. Is it a disc? Is it a, is it a facet joint? Is it just a strain in the lower back of some of the minor ligaments or is it a muscle strain? Which as if you've watched any of our videos, you know that's highly, highly, highly unlikely, especially given what we're currently doing right now because no one's in the gym overloading those muscles. Um, so that, that, that's that. How did you find the rehab? You've, maybe you've started our phase one, phase two work. How easy was it? How uh, effective was it for you? Did you start off only doing one or two reps or were you doing five to 10 and you've progressed on quite nicely? What activity are we looking to do? How intensive, how impact-based is that particular activity? If it's high impact, maybe it's worth leaving it if you haven't been doing the rehab very long. And then understanding that back, re back pain relapses are often delayed. It's not instant that you'll notice that relapse or you'll not instantly feel the reaction of that new activity that you've tried when you've tested it. Do not replace your rehab. Follow the protocols. Follow that phase one, phase two, phase three process all the way through to make sure that you're actually getting the necessary adaptations appropriate for your back 
and giving your back the time for the healing process to take place and the remodeling process to take place so that you can restore some of the tensile strength in those muscles and ligaments and tendons, etc. And then go through this treat process or treat um, uh, sort of strategy. Test, retest, evaluate, adjust if necessary, and then test again. So hopefully you guys have found that helpful. If you've got any questions, post it in the comments below and we'll go to Q&A in one second. I'll just change the mic. Okay, there we brilliant. go. We're ready. Good morning, everybody. Okay, awesome. Some very good comments. Uh, Faye has said, so number one, how was it injured? The disc protrusion, nerve damage. Number number two, how did you find the rehab? She struggled with the bridges and the dead bugs a lot at first. Yep. And then number three, what does she want to get into? Eventually, gym classes, for example, body pump. I love body pump. Uh, cardio combat and paddle boarding in the sea. Concerned about the latter due to awkward lifting, standing, mm. and falling. Yeah, so, so that's a really good example of going through things perfectly. Yeah. Um, so we know that because it's a disc injury, this point down here, the healing process can take a little bit longer to return to full strength. So we've got to have that in our mind. Some of those activities aren't necessarily so bad, but when we return to them, we want to maybe uh, reduce some of the high impact components of some of the classes, the body pump in particular. Uh, but also, you've gone through this process and you understand your movement better. We've, we've, we've realized a weakness in the way in which our core is integrating with our lower body because of those marching bridges where we're dropping a little bit on the one side, et cetera, um, and starting to make some real changes there. So that's a good evaluation point for you long-term to actually look at how much does the gap between maybe the left leg and the right leg when we're doing the marching bridges change and how do we get on with those lunges in phase three? Okay, brilliant. Um, Juliet on uh, YouTube has asked, a little while ago, Michael mentioned about doing the shimmy. First thing in the morning to ease the lower back pain. Should this be done in bed or when I get up? Can Michael demonstrate again, please? Yeah, sure. Do this one straight away. Um, so just to show you guys, you let him on your back and it's left and right. Just a little small movement like that. We're not moving all the way around like so. That's that's not necessary. It's the first thing you do. So if you wake up on your back, just a little shimmy left and right, nice and small. And then we can go a little bit wider. But it is, if you look at me from the side, we're going left and right. I'm not twisting. People do the twist, and sometimes they do that on the decompression as well, and we have to tell them quickly not to. Um, but but it's, it's, a, it's a left and right movement. Imagine your bum is like a little abacus ball, and it can only go left and right, and you're going small small range first, then slightly larger, and then you can consider rolling onto your side and getting up. Okay, brilliant. So you're, you're on your bed, you're on your back, you're on your lifting bed. your bum. Your no, bum you're not lifting still. your bum, bum still, uh, you know, you may want to do this with the knees bent. If you're bending your knees up, one leg at a time. One leg comes up, foot on the bed. Next leg comes up, foot on the bed. We do not use move both legs at the same time. That's a really good way to hurt ourselves. So please don't do that. Okay, awesome. Joe has asked, how do you distinguish between soreness after exercise and relapse pain? That's a really difficult one. We're, we're, generally speaking, if you've it depends on what activity you've done. So if you've gone for a particularly long walk, you'd expect to feel some soreness in the glutes, the hamstrings, the calves, the legs in general, maybe a little bit of lower back achiness because those muscles have worked a little bit more. Heaviness? You know, when you yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you, know, no, you feel a bit degree of he heaviness and stiffness. Yeah. Um, that will be, for certain people, many of you who have the sort of the stiffness or the rigidity or the achiness in the lower back, that may be a little bit more of a difficult question. Um, that being said, for those of you that have sort of raging sciatica or shooting pain down the legs, then that will be a very clear distinction between one and the other. So it is difficult if your pain is generally more of a muscular ache uh, that you're feeling in response to that injury in the lower back. Um, but it's something that you're going to have to academically distinguish and say, look, I've been through a long walk. My legs are achy. These should start to calm down over the next few days in terms of that stiffness but that's why your phase one routine is really important there because you're going to be working on those leg muscles to make sure they're stretched out nicely that's why as soon as you got back off that long walk or off that run you should have been doing your phase one exercise because that will reduce the stiffness in that area and obviously we should be getting the appropriate nutrition on board drinking plenty of water as well if we're upping our exercise so mm. worth bearing that in mind yeah and i think with a relapse would, would you not feel more pain sort of sharp pain in, in localized in uh, the area yeah it, de it depends if that person's got a um has it their pain is a sharp pain then they're going to get the sharp pain which will be the relapse but if if some some people just have a constant muscle ache you you okay. will for those people it will be more difficult to distinguish between the two but you'll notice that it's symmetrical for example if you've been on a run or a walk you're going to feel it on both sides 
maybe one side a little bit more than the other because the one side is the painful side or the side that's had the symptoms over the last six months, six years, but you should notice it on both sides. Yeah, and I think that's where the evaluation comes comes into play. That's the evaluation you point. And, and if you're, if you're in the premium membership, then, then get in the Facebook group and ask us. Okay. You know, that's what it's there for, to help you guys get back into these things. Okay, brilliant. Um, Karen has asked uh, if you get some back pain and it goes within a couple of weeks, has it healed on its own? Or, or would it still be a lingering problem that you need to address? I mean, if you've done nothing to solve it, the, the biggest problem that we see in the clinic anyway is that a lot of people have these lingering back pains and because they're young, they go away relatively quickly. Uh, maybe it goes away after two weeks and you kind of carry on, but they tend to be the warning shots that are fired um, in the early days. And if you're not addressing those issues, then I think the person that's had that, that it goes away in a few weeks, probably isn't gonna be watching this video because they're probably not that concerned about the back. But the person that's had it and it's getting worse despite what no matter what age they are those are the guys that i think are going to be watching this so i just don't think those people would end up coming onto youtube to looking for, look to look for things they kind of just ignore it if you know someone like that please try and encourage them not to ignore it because it'll really be to their benefit if they can say do you know what my lifestyle is not conducive with having a good back i'm working you know in wherever hard hard job working hard working long hours maybe do absolutely nothing for my general well-being um and you know don't take care of my back it's going to catch up on you sooner or later and when you're young you can get away with that well, you kind of get away with those things but all you're really doing is building up a problem that's going to going to catch you later on yeah um faye has asked with weakness in the core and the way it connects with the with the, the moving correctly with the lower body is is it mostly to do with the psoas muscle um no not necessarily uh, it, it could it could be part of the psoas muscle, but the particular example I, I know from Faye from speaking to you, uh, it was the marching bridges that were giving you trouble. So the psoas muscle, yes, is going to have a role in that, but that's primarily the way in which your glutes are working alongside your core, your midsection. So the glutes with actually the erector spinae muscles and the muscles along the lower back, the midsection, the way those are all working together. So um, the reality is there's not really many, and, and really apart from those first two exercises that we recommend in phase one, Anything in phase two uh, and three is really using multiple muscles at the same time and getting them to coordinate effectively with one another. So we, we really struggle to isolate any of those uh, in a meaningful way. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. I think that is everything for today. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us on today's live stream. Um, hopefully you found it helpful. If you do know anyone else is injuring their back, injuring their back regularly or has injured it in the past and you think this might be helpful in making sure they don't fall into a few pitfalls along the way when they're trying to get better, then please do consider subscribing to the channel, sharing it with them, hit the notification bell. Uh, we go live every single weekday and we do Q&A at the end of each of the live streams, just like today, to try and help you guys, give you guys a bit more information, a bit more support and answer your questions related to back pain and other issues for which we have a degree of competence <laughs> so tomorrow uh, 8 45 all about spondylolisthesis yes uh, another question from the group we're going to be going through spondylolisthesis in a little bit more detail so if you've got this if you wonder what it is uh, then we'll go through that onto tomorrow's live stream hopefully you guys will find it really interesting but until then have a great afternoon enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you tomorrow with another live stream